Evening, everybody. Um, we're going to open up the meeting tonight, 7 o'clock. So tonight, and I guess every night, every planning board meeting from this night onward, we're going to start things off a little differently with public comment before uh, we actually get into any hearings. It's going to be here tonight, but um, Carolyn, can you walk us through? Basically, it's to discuss anything that's not on the dock. Right, that might would otherwise come up as the agenda proceeded. So if anybody has any issues that they want to raise for the planning board, then that would be a time to do it. But obviously during public hearings, you guys are barred from hearing anybody until that um, time. So. Interesting. All right, well, I think for it to work, you have to limit it. If people make comments, it's not a right. discussion period. Right. That's not, I don't think it should be a give and take with the planning board. People, you know, let Sustick or somebody get up and talk. But it should be limited to three minutes so we have some kind of control over it. Yeah, and uh, actually that's what I was going to, I don't, I don't understand its role given how our <coughs> hearings normally go. That's what I, I'm, I was confused about why does there need to be, a, we have public comment. I, I wasn't understanding that kind of like, um, I, yeah, I'm not, I don't, I think there could be occasions where someone might want to talk about the fact that they don't like certain zoning or I'm just making up issues or traffic's really bad, can, um, you guys should do something about it. Even if it's not it. on the docket. You, right. Okay. And right. so anything that someone Especially. wants to come and talk about. Okay. Right. Okay. But, the, but I think that, so I think it would be important, um, as chair to identify sort of if it if it looks like there might be someone who's present who wants to say something or just set up the rules each time and say we're only taking public comment on anything that's not you know prescribed further down in the agenda um, and then and then if it looks like there are a lot of and then also stipulate if there's a timeline or whatever other rules you guys want to create I mean, this is new to us but not to some other boards are are there rules that are carried through to the other boards like three minute limit no discussion back and forth or is it I think each board makes up its own rules but of course it's different when there's a policy board versus an adjudicatory board so the policy boards may it may have it down pat because that's, that's all they do is talk so you know well like I mean, on the when I was on the school committee the school committee like the, and the city council does the same thing yeah you get your you get to say your piece but the board the school committee and city council do not reply. Um, and sometimes they'll limit it to three minutes, depending if the, the agenda is big. And sometimes it's just, if it's just a few people, there's no time limit. But I think it's up to the chair, depending on the, the size of the crowd, to say, it looks like we've got a lot of people, we'll limit it to three minutes. But um, I want to clarify that the way Carolyn just stated it, if it, if the topic is on our agenda, we do not hear it. And that's not my understanding of it. I think. Anyone could get up, and even if we're going to hear that hours later, they have an opportunity to come in and make a statement. We don't respond. No, no, no. no. Okay. They're not allowed. They're barred. You, you are barred legally from hearing any evidence about something that's public, a public hearing later in the agenda. Okay. So if someone starts to say, "Hey, I hate this project on King Street," you have to say, "Sorry, you need to wait till 8:45," which I think has. The piece of this that I, I've been confused by, I mean, I think we're being, uh, th that the intention, as I understood it, was not to keep the public waiting if the, they wanted to come in and say something, and right. or they could have a time at the beginning of no. every meeting. <laughs> but, yeah. that idea. Well, no, but yeah. I, think that, I think that was the general public discussion about right. nope. why is planning board different, and I think we're different because of the very the right. public hearing point of this. Yeah, right. I think it might be it might be coming from a good place, a well intended exactly. place, but it's not terribly applicable because of the way we right. manage. And the, and that's I, I wanted to get that clarified. But right. I, I don't think we can do what the public intent, what the city council and public intent really was, was but true. allow people instead of having to wait until nine oh. o'clock when we get to it if oh. they wanted to stop by and give us a statement and leave they could do that but that's no, no. we can't do that no. yeah. i wanted to get no. that clearly yeah it's going to anger people yeah right right i mean and, and so that's why i think it, that's why i think obviously at the front end of the meeting and for people who don't regularly come to the meetings you know it's going to be a little repetitive for the board but mm -hmm. to just express that right out front each time yes. i don't think it's understood at all 
Thanks. It should be interesting. Do you understand? I didn't understand. Really nice. Okay. So first up on our agenda tonight is uh, Bottoms Road. Do you, everybody got some information on that, which I thought was pretty interesting. <laughs> Do you want to walk us through that, Carolyn? Yeah. I mean, I think the um, you guys at the last meeting were reticent to make any comment about it because that you wanted some more information about its history and so in our records um, there were all there was this permit file there were some lawsuits brought against um, neighbors and so I mean there's sort of this clear uh, path of um, when these lots got developed as actually I didn't realize this is part of the high meadow road subdivision um, and um, so there, you know, served as a driveway to one lot, and then uh, as um, development interest increased along Clement Street, there were other properties were sold off, and um, that one case really in, in the 80s re revolved around a person who wanted to act, use it as a private driveway or shared driveway and was barred from doing that from another property owner. So um, I think, um, and then they, of course, the ironic thing is back then the planning board said, hey, DPW, stop maintaining this. This is right. clearly a private driveway. Mm -hmm. And then the response was, nah, yeah. we'll just, right. it's not a big deal. Mm -hmm. We'll keep doing it. Right. <laughs> so. Um, so we've got a, a ruling that's almost 30 years old that says specifically that it's a private road, not a public street. Right. But now it's up. Is somebody on the street? Uh, Petitioned. Petitioning, or is it could, can it be somebody, the same person who lives near this street but it's not on the street? Can they petition on behalf of Bottoms? Street? Anybody, the way the street petitions go, are the any six residents anywhere in the city can petition for any street. So any all you six need are residents? any six residents of Northampton. So you don't have to live on the street. You don't have to live within a mile of the street. If you get six people to say, "Hey, city council, take this as a public street," then you it automatically starts the process and so this one is my understanding came forward from a resident on the street and I think there was another resident who didn't want the city to right. take it as a public street so even on the same on the driveway there's um, conflicting views um, but it really does boil down to snow plowing mm -hmm. um, so okay. is the person who's applying who, own, who owns the street the driveway it's um well it, it, it's the row so that survey that i sent you shows it's on the parcel that's open space for the high meadow road and then it connects to the um house lot um but i forget i think it's a brickman and rared maybe i can't remember the names i can pull it up um when you say it's only snow plowing Do you have that what survey? about the question of maintenance what the hell she talking about well, there's also maintaining a gravel road, but I think the primary issue or concern for the property owners is who will plow the long driveway. Thank you. And if it's private, then obviously the property owners are responsible for right. that versus the city. But, but, if, but I think so. so maintenance. Right. So for all all along, uh, and so the, then it goes back to the issue when this came up was because DPW. Um, we've been told by a city solicitor that any we're not allowed to do anything on streets that are not officially accepted by the city. So then the concern from property owners was that all of a sudden what had been sort of an historic pattern of DPW coming in and plowing would go away. And there are no criteria for accepting? Well, <laughs> ultimately it's the city council approval but they look to the Board of Public Works for a recommendation and Planning Board for a recommendation. And Board of Public Works has sort of a list of 12 or so criteria, but again, it's not, it's hard, it's not cut and dry like we were discussing last time. You might apply some criteria, and, and the Planning Board is going to be probably different than from Board of Public Works. Um, but in some cases, they don't all, you, you can't necessarily apply them uniformly for every incidents because you've got really old you know core neighborhood streets that for some weird reason were never um, accepted but then you also have a concern about people who build driveways and then decide 20 years later this is a real pain to maintain let's see if the city can do it for me and so that's sort of a backdoor way of getting a public street and opening up all sorts of other issues that <coughs> revolve around public streets 
Well, also on that, because I mean, there's <coughs> it creates frontage. So if right. all the empty space that's around on, on there are. that road, you could put in, yeah. I don't know how many lots. That's well, a county. Somebody wanted to, obviously, when you look at, if you go back and go through all that stuff, it looks like <coughs> it could have been flatted out at one point. For right. I think that one parcel that's the big open space behind the High Meadow Road subdivision was intended to be permanently protected open space. Um, but, you know, that doesn't necessarily bar someone from trying to um, come back and modify that if there's a public road there. Well, uh, you, you seem to make it sound as if there's something shameful about asking for your street to be accepted as a public street. I mean, it, it, it is, I mean, if it's used to ask, access more than a few separately owned houses, you know, it, it, the clock sort of starts over again after well, 30 no, years or Well, no, I'm, what I'm suggesting is if, I, I'm not suggesting shame, I'm just saying that if you create something that's a driveway to access a, a pri an individual property, then over time, just because the city has maintained it, um, doesn't mean that it necessarily rises to the level of, of a public street and that the city should take on the responsibility for the maintenance of something that really is, um, was built, was intended, and, and, and I guess it gets back to sort of if you think about subdivisions now and what's a, what meets the standards for subdivision, it's a quite rigorous process to come through for a new street. And so, um, you know, it's also it's in that regard. I guess it's an equity issue because if someone goes through the entire process to to create a public street and meet public standards for streets, but another person decides just to wait it out as a waiting game, you know, then you're not treating those processes. Well, the road was created when the rules were different too. The subdivision rules were much more stringent than they used to be. Well, in 1985, they weren't. We had we had. Um, fairly detailed subdivision rules. So it goes back to 1950. It's not just one house. I mean, it certainly looks to me like it's a, a road up until a certain point, and then it's a big, long driveway up right. to the last house. But there's two or three houses. At the very end, there's a couple. A couple there's two okay. or three. I can't remember. Uh, it's not on that survey. No. <clears throat> yeah, there are one or two as you come up on the left in the long drive. And then it, it looks like there's one at the end, but I think there's actually a couple. But our, our protocol last meeting the barn, I think, was um, for roads that everybody thought were absolutely roads, that there was no question these were streets. We recommended approval. For all other roads, whether we felt strongly <clears throat> or not, we kind of pushed to the DPW. We didn't have any roads that were like this, where we have a ruling that says it's not a road. So I don't know. And B BPW also voted to to recommend that the council not accept this as a street. So that's the other um, piece that was in as part of the conversation last time. Okay. So my inclination on, for this specific road would be to follow the rule, ruling that we have and the recommendation of DPW and say this this particular road is not a road. But I don't know how others feel. Yeah, I think, I mean, what we also talked about last time was, <clears throat> as the planning board, if this became a road, would we want, I don't know how many unit lots you could put on there, but, I mean, is this where we want development? I think the I, idea I think it's a perfectly logical place for infill. In the middle of these pastures? Pardon? In the middle of the, the, the pastures on either well, side? It, looking at the surrounding area, mm -hmm. it's, it's, um, Bay State is right right there across the river. Uh, Glen, what's the name of the road? Clement Street. Hmm? Clement Street? Yeah, Clement Street is definitely uh, residential, fairly thickly settled. I don't think it's out of character. Mm. But do we have infrastructure that runs up? I mean. I think the other piece of it is, in terms of um, the sustainability plan, we haven't really talked about expanding dense, more dense development on that side of the river, and that was sort of the con um, There are some portions that, you know, sort of on the, the river is almost like the dividing line in some, in some 
parts of the city in terms of where we want to concentrate development. So not that that might not be a valid question. I just don't know that there's been enough public conversation about where it makes sense to encourage that kind of development, whereas there's been more of that in some of more more of the urban neighborhoods. Is it true if that were made a public street that yeah. more houses That's could be put up there? Or are we just is this just sort of a theoretical conversation? Um, I would have to go back and do more deed research on the lots and what kind of restriction there is on the open space. That doesn't mean that um, someone couldn't come in and ask for an amendment or modification because the public street issue but but there may be no. there may be deed restrictions that carry forward so I don't know I don't know the answer to that Anybody else on this one I did we last time did we go through each road and then make recommendations or did we do them one at a time um, you did them one at a time okay. yeah I mean for what it's worth my inclination would be um, no recommendation like I said last meeting for all, for all of them is my personal feeling mm -hmm. Can I take a crack at answering that though? I'm beginning to get a sense that you know DPW is is has a workload problem when they take on a new road, and and they have a uh, uh, engineering consideration for for the scale and whether it's a road or whether it's not a road, so. I see them, I see us as a healthy tension against that. If DPW says, no, I, I don't want to take on those roads, those, you know, we haven't been, we, we can't expand our requirements for plowing any more than we have. But we as the planning board say, you know, but this is a, a possible development area. And if you made that a public way, it would lead to development. So that's the kind of question I think we should be thinking about. Oh, I definitely think we should not feel that we have to agree with the BPW's recommendation. I agree. It's just as if they were, if the, you, it's like arguing against a new development or subdivision because it would increase the load of the, on the schools. That's right. not our purview. Right, right. It seems to me some of these ought to be fairly easy to decide on and some of them aren't, so I don't think I would go with, with the blanket not, not dealing with it. Right. I, th I think that's what, that's, what we got. that's how we looked at it last time. Were the ones that were so clearly, everybody's in agreement that they're streets. Okay. We vote you yes. Were here. And the others, I don't think we had any that were definitely not so, roads. No. There was some ambiguity for whatever reason. So this, to me, this one doesn't fall under either one of those categories. Or it does. It falls, it falls to me just because I'm uncomfortable with the planning board ruling a street or not a street. But if what we have in front of us says it's there's actual somebody's already done the legwork before us and it's gone in front, there's a ruling that said nope, it's not a street. They don't want it to be a street, then it's not a street. But that was so. 1985. No, you're right. So, as it turns out, that was a long time. So, anybody want to make a motion on this one? So we're we're making a motion to recommend approval or or pushing it. I make a motion it. to recommend not approval. Disapproval, whatever the word is. Second. Stephen. But we've we've already established the ground rules that we're not going to disapprove any. We're just going to say no opinion. Well, that's what we did. That's what we did last time. Well, you divided them into categories. There were some that you felt like had clear. There's there's clearly a planning interest, and I think you dealt with those in one way. Then there was a category of. Um, where there was some, dis you, you may have had a differing opinion from Board of Public Works, and then for those, you felt like it was almost purely a political decision about whether it went one way or the other. So I think there is, it wasn't that you just decided no opinion on all the other no, ones. What? You didn't just blanketly say, we don't have an opinion, we're just going to give it back to City Council with no opinion. You did divide them up into categories of, you know, clear, less clear and then murky, right. <laughs> sort of. Oh, I had I, I in could tell period, if it was in the period minutes. by each one, as in no opinion. Right. Yeah, we definitely there, there said. We said no. There that's was, right. That's no what I'm we trying to establish. No. There we were none. Said, there were some that you said that you made recommendation positively. Yes. yes. Yeah, but there weren't any that we did, recommended against. That's correct. Right. So right. I don't think that we should well, change the rules on that. Then well, no, I don't think we could. It's a change of the rules. I think this one was, we, we purposely put this one off because it was 
we couldn't decide because there was more information. She moved to to to, to, to vote, vote no. no on it. Oh no, and I second it. So I get. Oh, I guess I thought we were discussing the motion, but. Well, I'm discussing the motion. Yeah. And the motion is to recommend against it instead of saying no opinion. Right, but I, what I'm saying is because last time we either voted for or no opinion doesn't mean this time we can say we can't say no. I mean, I, well, I, that's what I want. That's what I'm suggesting that we say. How about we vote? We've got a motion and a second, so. Well, it was your idea, Jen, to, to say to say no opinion. And That's I, what I'm going I thought say. it was a fine idea. So we have a motion and a second. All in favor will vote no for Bottoms Road. So all in favor? Oh, all in favor of the, the, of the motion. motion. Of the motion. Right. Which is to no. say no. To say no. So, so three. Three. Okay. All opposed? Five. Okay. So you want to make a new motion then? Yes. So I would move that we have no opinion. Second. Second, Randy. All in favor? Can I just say, can I just on this particular yes. propose right. a friendly amendment that it's a, it's a no recommendation, as opposed to no opinion? Because I don't. I, at the last meeting, there was a, a member of the public here that felt like we weren't paying proper attention to this, and I think no opinion <laughs> suggests that we don't care, and I don't think that's what we're saying. I think we're saying we are not making a recommendation. Okay. Mm -hmm. No Maybe recommendation. I'm just being a lawyer, but. Right. No, oh, that's I, just a good point. You are, but yeah. can we fix last? I can't stop last. Myself. Fix the last ones to be. I mean, I, I think it's a good yeah, point, it and I think point. it should yeah. apply to the last ones. I'll too. amend my motion. Too. Okay. So moved. Second, Frandy. So a, a yes vote is no, right. not no. recommending this as a street. So all in favor? One, two, three, four, five. Opposed? Three. There we go. So no recommendations. That's for consistent. <laughs> <laughs> now you're back to saying we don't, wrong. don't recommend it. That's not saying there's no recommendation. The motion should read no recommendation, right. not that we don't recommend it. That's entirely different. Yes. 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 Got that? Yeah. So next up, we have three other streets. No, four. 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 Four other streets? Mm -hmm. oh, oh, Graves, I forgot about that. I didn't bother. I didn't see that. Do you want to show us where these are? Yeah. Marilyn, or? Oh, yeah. It's just communal space. Yeah. So three were in Florence. One was right next to Joe's. Pizza. Sorry, what do you want to know? Uh, the Graves have oh, yeah. the, the, the other ones. Where do you want to start, Carolyn? Um, I'm going to find the file first. Hobart Lane of North End. Oh, yeah. yeah. I was say, well, this is oh, she wants to open up that So it's real. It's a, it's the city really should plow it though. Why? That. Because if the city is plowing a street they don't own, do they have a liability that's different than yeah. if they are plowing a street that is the city street? Yes. That's that's why it's come up um, um, so fast and furiously because um, the city was notified by the city solicitor that we can't do that anymore. Who would think? <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. I just, uh, <laughs> um, I'm having a problem getting to the well, network. And, so. okay. In that regard, you take somewhere that has been plowed and all of a sudden it's not plowed and you have stopped the movement of traffic. Right. I mean, in, a, in other words, who steps up pronounce it. to fill the void is, is That's what some of the some of these steps. one in particular is interesting because there is a movement of traffic. Others are yes. you could argue are a parking lot or a, or, a, a or an funky alley. driveway or, or something alley. like that. Absolutely. Right. This is that's great. And she's like she, her thing is spread it for She's got a system. She's got a system. <laughs> and she is. She, she does what? I just had it up on the screen. Yeah, that's awesome. And she's how old? Fifteen. Nice. Yeah. Uh, May. Oh, okay. Oh, that's there you go. 
<laughs> I think John pulled that out when you hey. <laughs> oh, see how long it took you to catch it. It's not the first time she's won. <laughs> we always play for dinner, so I had to take him to Osaka. Okay. It's like salt for dinner. Oh, yeah. When you get the, you know, the, the, the. Okay, there we go. So, um, there, so there are three in Florence Center. So, um, Depot is this alleyway that sort of connects. Um, <laughs> Is that Kai's? That's and an editorial comment. Did I say something about parking lots again? <laughs> is that a parking lot? It's a parking lot. There is a parking lot here. On either side? Yeah, yeah. But yeah. there's a throughway as well. Yeah. There's, <laughs> there's a whole yeah. series of parking it all the lots. Yeah. It's the back of Silk City. It's the back of the paint store. It's the bank. Yeah. I actually right. used it trying to find Depot Road today. Right. Uh -huh. no, I go down the road. I turn Did it work? <laughs> So, I mean, as you can see, actually, this, these dark lines are property boundaries. So right. it's carved up into at least two parcels back here. And Florence Savings Bank, I think, has its parking along here. And also at the end. Um, so in this case, I, DPW actually facilitated the petitions. They got, because the Board of Public Works asked them, just get these moving. So they just... Um, have been putting forward several of these. So these, all of these to tonight were petitioned by um, Department of Public Works. So. Can I ask one question about Depot Road though? I mean, it, like you show, it goes through two or three lots. Do the owners of those lots know that the city, in a sense, is taking that land? Or doesn't the city, does the city take the land? Well, what would happen is um, the city would have to do all the survey work, re you know, and go through the public, pr the process of a taking. Mm -hmm. But it divides um, one of those parcels in two. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, you know, you, they'd have to create easements and, and all of that um, to, you know, for someone to, to, I mean, it might change the permit, I suppose, but it's always been referred to as a road. Yeah. Um, but it is part of the ownership of this. So, I, yeah. I they mean, could it close is, it off, couldn't It is a conundrum no, because... <laughs> It's a, yeah. it's, it's, it's a, it's a diff it's different than the other ones that we yeah. Where, it's, yeah. where it's actually going through three people's right. property. But right. it would make the legal right. documentation match what in reality actually, you know, has become the norm. Right. Yes. Okay. Right. The upper part, the part that's close to Maple Street is, is a street. Yeah. The part in front of the... Uh, Four Depot Street, the paint store. By the paint store, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and there's parallel parking in front of it. We parked there this afternoon. Yeah. Uh, it's clearly a heavily used through street, and I think it would be chaos if the DPW did not plow it. Oh, yeah. It's like an alley without buildings on either side. It's an alleyway with parking lots on either side. Right, so you essentially you'd have one person who would plow to this point. <laughs> Right. Yeah, well, it's snow over there. Right. It, it has no real curbs. I mean, it's a funny. Right. Right. Yeah. It, it's not really an alley. It's the front of the paint store that fronts on it. I mean, I, I yeah, don't, right. you don't really have alleys around here. Right. So, any opinions? I move that we recommend acceptance of Depot Avenue, as is what it says on the sign. <sighs> Although I think it should be Depot Street <laughs> or Depot Alley. Yeah, while we're at it, yeah, we should change probably it. rename I want to that, rename right? it. We have apparently have unfettered authority. Over Depot Parking Street. Lot Road. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Can we make it one way? Well, we could call it uh, Center Court in Florence, though. <laughs> There's nothing against having two different names. <laughs> we have a lot of those, actually. Yeah. All right, so we got a motion from Frandy. Second, Second. One. Second John. Discussion. This is obviously used as a street. Yeah. I mean, there's just it, it's a strange arrangement, but that's not for us to undo. It's, it's not the only one in town, that's for sure. It's, right. Uh, it's a, but it's obviously being used as a street. Yeah. I agree. All in favor? So yes for Depot Road. Okay. Um, King. Avenue is, uh, whoops, only let me go so far. Um, this is Bardwell right here, bike path, and then this is North Maple. Which one's Oak? Is that the, the 
That's Oak? Yeah. No, that's, that's, um, lake. yeah, Lake. Oak oh, sorry. Up here. Somewhere. There's Oak over there. So, um, I don't know, I, I don't know anything about the history of this. Obviously, there's, you know, four parcels off of here. And then this one, I don't know if the driveway access is from Bardwell or not. Is one of those open? I haven't. It's the, the second one up on the left? This one? Yeah. Undeveloped? Undeveloped? Uh -uh. Or is there a house on the lower corner? The they're all there. Oh, yeah. There is, an, there is a vacant fire lot there. Fire hydrant at the very end of that. What, if any, difference does that make? No, nah, I mean, Good. that's just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> we require that in condominium associations, too. Uh -huh. Okay. All right. I would just say it feels like an alley. It it's does. one lane wide. It's paved. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this, this, I think it's got four houses. This road felt to me like some of the roads that we talked about at the last meeting, where it served three or four houses. Right. But it didn't feel like a road. It felt it's more narrow. like access to those three or four houses. Right. right. It's narrow and uh, Not an hard alley, to turn though. around. I mean, driveway you, you got to go driveway to turn around, et cetera. No, it really did feel like a DC alley that went behind the alleys don't have houses facing them that's yeah, just depends. maybe in England the uh, interesting thing about that was that the DPW did just repave the first maybe 100 feet of that within the last year or two for what that's the, first, the, the straw that broke the camel's back. yeah it could have been <laughs> they did what that's it's so repaved it's, there's a new surface but not the whole thing no, it, it, <laughs> part of the only part that needed repaving. That's the other piece, actually. There's, you're not supposed to use. There's something about the state money too. For it can only be on city streets. So. Sure. Yeah. So therefore, if we accept these, that we can extend the mileage in town that we're already paving, that the state could then give you a share for. Is yes. that? Yeah. <laughs> I'm astounded that we paved this one. Any part of it? Mm. Mm -hmm. No, they're good guys. Do you want to do a no recommendation on this one? Or do you want no. to say? You want to say yes? No, I just, no. I just want to say no recommendation. Right. That's what I said. Yeah. That's what I said. Oh, not, <laughs> not a no, but a, a we no. don't want to make a recommendation. Instead of right. no opinion, we'll, no recommendation. I, well, well, yeah. The rules that we established. Right. For one thing, I don't buy what he said that it meant we didn't care. You know, it, you can have you can not have an opinion on something and still care about it. Yeah. I right. thought that was pretty bogus, actually. So uh, I'll make a motion that says we will not make a recommendation on King Street. Uh, or King Ave, excuse King me. Ave, yeah. King Street. <laughs> <laughs> that, that might cause some problems. I don't want to plow that either. <laughs> Things That's too wide. Meeting. <laughs> you see, I'm so that's Stuck right. King King Street. Street. Right. King Street is now a. <laughs> That's King an alley. Now a place. <laughs> right. He's trying to help. <laughs> Auto alley. Uh, so we have a motion and a second. All in favor? A second. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So no recommendation for King Ave. No oh, wow. Okay. Um. Is that one? Oh, God. That, that dead ends into the rail trail, the bike path. Um, and it's sort of, it's that one that goes, Cooper's is right here in yep. the corner. Oh, sorry, Steve. Street. It's got curbs like a street. Yeah. It's wide like a street. It's got houses on it like a street. Yeah, it looks like a street. Although certain times of day, it just looks like a parking lot. <laughs> I strongly yeah, recommend I we, uh, we recommend to no, approve Wilder as a public way. I, 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 second. Second. John, second John. Oh, wait. Sorry. It was me, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> Any discussion on this one? No? All in favor? So Wilder is a street. So we have two no's and two yeses. So Graves Avenue will be the tiebreaker. Yeah, how can Graves Avenue be a private way? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just don't understand how it... With granite curbs and a great wide street. And oh, yeah, and all the renovation they've done on it. And yeah. Can we also ask them to make the cut through to the school open? 
Or is yeah. that a you can walk through to the school. Well, yeah. that's the one that actually we were um, discussing with the pri property owners at the end to give, there is a section at the end that's not public way that goes right to the Bridge Street School that we had discussed with the property owner to potentially yeah, give to the city as um, pedestrian access to Bridge. Um, but didn't they? they but decide? at that time, we didn't realize. I think that <laughs> the rest of the street actually yeah, was wasn't <laughs> actually. <a problem>. Right. <laughs> yeah. But weren't they all against it? Didn't um, it there fail? Was, there was. Um, I forget the step. What the neighbors the, didn't want the little brats. Yeah, the neighbors didn't. Didn't the neighbors hey, come yeah, down? And got my son is going to be one of those brats. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> is there? A, I think it's worth discussing because it looks like that. By virtue of putting the school there, at some point we took away the street and then and then didn't pay, you know, and and that that unpaved area at the end of the street has now been taken as private parking. I don't know the history of that lot, yeah. but if we now make this a public way, which I think we all would say it quacks like a street, um, it, I would be interested in seeing if there isn't a way to have public access to at the end of the street to the school. Yeah. You mean guaranteed public access? Because you can walk mm -hmm. through now. There's a fence around the parking lot. I think there's a break in the fence. Yeah, you can, yeah. you can get through. You can get through. But yeah. but that but that was what I was wondering about. I thought the neighbors there was the city went down, <laughs> and the neighbors were very much against it. Right. And if it becomes a private way, does the city now say it's not your decision anymore? Well, it depends on how far they take it. If they take it to the end where it's paved. And leave that discussion for another day. I mean, you all can also recommend that it go all the way to the Bridge Street, that you recommend street acceptance and pursue extending it for access to Bridge Street. Well, who owns that land at the end of this? Who the two abutting property owners own to the center, essentially to what would be the center, center line. line. Hmm. For the benefit of getting that street. It, you know, if, if, if it does not become a public way, then that street, you know, is not plowed and maintained and there's a great deal of expense and a lot of people that have to work that all out so I, th I think it's we would recommend that it become a public way but I would like to create some assurance of public access are you talking about automobile access or people access people access yeah. so that that's you're true. trying to continue the walkway that's there in a yeah okay. right but, but can we do that I mean can we do that officially I mean, can, I mean, we can, we can, can it. Right. Yeah, we're not making the decision. We're just right. making a recommendation. Yeah. To me, that's a planning board decision. Right. The world will not long remember what happens here. <laughs> I'm not positive it's an issue, though. I've never not gotten through there. So. No, but somebody but you're can close it off. And right. If you, if you make uh -huh. it. Right. <laughs> yeah, somebody could put a spite fence up. Right. Well, they could decide they want to do something with that property that right. would close it off. That's all. Right. Right. So the issue came up when there was that whole discussion of moving um, the church building over to the back of the historic Northampton, because historic Northampton is what backs up to it. Um, I don't know if you can really see. Uh, Here's the school, yeah, okay. and so here's the end of the street here. Um, whoa, sorry, flying. Hi, there's my house. You need to do these in the winter, Carolyn. So I, I don't do the flyovers. <laughs> um, so this is historic Northampton to this point, and then this is another property owner. So you can see how it's kind of a funky zigzag. And then the school is there. Is there anything on that property, the bottom right one? There's parking in there. Yeah. It's gravel parking. But Ooh. it's oh. getting seasick. No, I exactly. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that is cool. Yeah, so there's oh, a yeah. little structure here, and then this is parking. Well, there's parking under those trees too. I mean, there's right. room for more parking than it looks like there. Well, I don't think. I think we should just recommend it as acceptance as a public street and leave the politics up to somebody else that actually has control over it. Hmm. I think. I don't think I, it's the incentive to. to I, I think everybody right now would say, "Oh, yeah, that sounds fine. I'll get the street paved, and and we we won't 
do anything to block it up. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I don't think that we're asking for much of a change. We're asking for a continuation of the status quo right. that says you can get through to the school from there. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Is it a, is it a walkway or is it just like a mm -hmm. it's a path? Mm -hmm. it's just a, a worn footpath it's a and path. the grass? Okay. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It's where the cows used to walk. Yeah, but I'm, I'm fine with making the recommendation because it's like, again, we're just, we're, we're stating or what we'd like to a recommendation right. to the city council. They're the ones who are going to. Right. It'll bring it to their attention. And if yeah, this doesn't qualify right. as safe routes to school, what does? And we right. also recommend that they don't have public comment at the beginning of our meetings. I was actually <laughs> as close as, as I am to the street as many times as I've driven by it. When this came up, I was like, really? Graves doesn't go all the way through? I wasn't, I wasn't really. It's the only paying attention, yeah, right. and not until I got on it, I was like, "Oh, that's right, it stops." Which is why I speculated that we took the land when we did the school. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't know that, but hmm. that school's been there since the twenties. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, the street was too. Real parts of that school. Those parts are insane. So was there so a recommendation a, in there? Yeah, motion on this one. I move that we. Recommend acceptance of Graves Avenue as a public way. Plus. With any further recommendations? Period. No. <laughs> well, he said it. Second to that. If nobody seconds it, then second we don't have to. John. Oh! John. <laughs> <laughs> to say you don't have to second it. All in favor? One, two, three, four. Uh, opposed? One, two, three, four. <laughs> <laughs> I want another motion. <laughs> Devin, this is I, I move we accept Graves Avenue as a public way with <coughs> a recommendation that the pedestrian access to the school be maintained. Second. Second. Stephen, any discussion? All in favor? There we go. Oh. <laughs> Opposed. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, let me just make sure I got who vo the first motion. It was four to four. Um, who voted against? So, Stephen. Okay. Of course, this motion, are we, can we discuss this motion right yeah. now? It says to maintain the path, but what if there isn't a legal path through there? It's not a city. Legalize access. You want to oh, okay. you, you well, legalize access, yeah. don't you? I think we're just bringing it to the yeah. right. council's Giving attention. Giving everybody a heads up. Gonna defer, a we can I deferred it to the council with that motion. Likely. Okay, next up, uh, zoning district changes. Review of format design standards. And you sent an update. Everybody got the. Yeah, I have paper copies with me. Let's see. Mm -hmm. oh. see so I have it on my computer. Do you, do you want to see? Oh, uh, no, go. Anybody else new? Oh, sorry. Okay. Oh. I'm good. I'm good. Are these different than what you sent before that you're passing around? Um, well, the only difference is I changed principal to principal. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> spell check, Brandon. Yeah, oh, well, no, it wasn't a spell check. No. It was graphic oh. change. Oh, okay. I thought that. Uh -huh. It was interesting that spell checker didn't find that. It doesn't. Somehow. Because it's a graphic. Yeah. yeah. It was, so it was yeah. straightly a graphic. So. But it's not. It was spelled correctly. Yeah. It was just the wrong. Russ is using it. Right. It's a homonym. It's not right. a. It's not a misspelling. It's just right. a different word. Right. You know homonyms? It's a meaning. <laughs> This is A. <laughs> oh, wait. Okay. And surface cheese. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I think it qualifies. Are we going in no. alphabetical order? Yes, let's start with A. Okay. Do you guys need B? You need B? B? No, no, I have need general C. Question. Oh, I've got C. Character. Okay. Things settle down. Yeah. Do you need Jim? Jim, do you need, do you need a copy? I'd love a copy. I have a question also. Okay, Devin, you. Yeah, here. I it's all three. It's all three. Carolyn, cut me off again. I know. That was Steven. I saw it happen. <laughs> oh. Watch the cable. Oh, shit. <laughs> you like this high tech system? I know, I know. You need some duct tape. I need the A. 
With the budget cuts, we're not even doing that. <laughs> uh, so Evan's yeah. got a question for you, Carolyn. I have one too. And then Frandy. Okay, so okay. there. Uh, this is a continuation of the PVPC question. So there's a, a move afoot. There's a, a bill in, in the state. Senate that's an act to promote the planning and development of sustainable communities. Um, it's been 1975 the last time we did zoning law changes in the state. They are talking very optimistically about the possibility of this law getting through next year. So is any of this that we're doing subject to being um, undone. Yeah, undone by that? Or if, do we need to? I don't think so. I mean, I don't know that it's going to pass, but. Um, uh, yeah, I did, I, you know. Uh, There's certainly been others, but I just, I wonder if uh, it's certainly, you're not doing it with that in mind, right? Yeah. Okay. That's all I needed. I mean, really, it's, um, I mean, some of this is administrative and then other, it's, you know, these freeze issues are about when you go in and change zoning. Yeah, I didn't mean for you to have to say anything about that bill. I just yeah. wanted to know that you weren't, you, you weren't doing this with any eye towards that no okay. no um so anyway so i just just <laughs> sort of Brandy, do you have a question too well i can wait okay good so um you know we talked about trying to um well one reformat to make it easier to read um and to um and to sort of lay out more um pictorially what what the intentions were for each district so I obviously want feedback from you all about that um, what you think about that but also we went in and sort of trying to think about incorporating comments from the neighborhoods um, obviously Ward 3 has been very vocal about their concerns about changes um, and the zoning revisions committee had many Ward 3 members on that committee that um, came up with the initial sort of um, broad brush recommendations to the to the board initially but we also had comments um, some comments from other residents as well so the change that there are a couple of changes in the, the document um, that I wanted to go over and the primary change is really about how how to configure lot size so original so going up until this point we've been talking about a minimum lot size no matter what you build of 5,000 square feet with 50 feet of frontage and 75 feet of depth um, so uh, this is in URA um, and there was a concern maybe not so much in URA but the other districts B and C that then that sort of then the, the fallback obviously that the cap then would have been based purely on open space um, and parking so you might be able to say oh I can fit 10 units on a parcel but then when you really figure out how much parking you have to provide that's going to back off how many units you can really put on the lot because you would then bump up against the open space requirements but there was still some discomfort um, I think from what you all heard from people um, concerned about the worst case scenario where you really could just ramp up um, total number of units. So what we've done here is propose a per unit, go back to the per unit count, but significantly reduce it from what the existing, to reflect more again of what's on the ground, but still put in maybe an added comfort level for residents that it's not um, a wholesale change in the way we look at um, how we calculate density so in urban residential a still 5,000 square feet per unit again in URA it's single-family home with an accessory apartment and there aren't really any other it's primarily a residential um, district and that's what the description is about that there are some other um, uses cemeteries and um, things like that that are allowed in um, URA but principally it's um, residential so this um, so that sort of carries forward in the B and C districts too, a per unit lot size requirement that then gets you to a cap um, probably more readily potentially more readily than using open space um, nothing else in the setbacks or 
um, other dimensions in this is, is shown. And then, of course, the design standards that um, we got help from, from Kuhn Riddle, to put in here to talk about sort of the, the four points about um, how buildings face the need to face the street and to have covered entries and that attached garages should really be um, minimized in terms of the um, frontage and um, impact along a street and that the, the residential component really needs to be the primary function on the street. So those are incorporated here. Mark, I can ask my question now. Yeah. Okay, my question is, what does it exactly does it mean that buildings uh, must face the street? Does it have to be parallel to the street? Or Front can entry. It, hmm? Front entry. Okay, must face the street. Right. But does that mean the house can still be counted at an angle or not? I mean, some houses aren't parallel to the street. Right. And so we there had been a lot of discussion about that. Um, I think that I recall that you all decided that um, it made sense to have that um, but the planning board had the option to waive that through site plan approval if someone had a different layout that they um, desired because typically the urban character of the neighborhoods is that the front door faces the street. So that in order to ensure sort of that rhythm along a street, that that would be the, the initial standard. But if someone wanted to vary from that, they could come to the planning board for approval. Well, I understand it, but facing the street to me, it could mean being off up to 45 degree angle either way. I, I don't know, I just don't know whether that's precise enough or. Or if, you're, if, if the road is curved, you know. Do you what if the it? house is, is at an angle, but the, but the front door does face the street, but the house. You mean is, be parallel. The the door be parallel. The yeah, street. the door is parallel, but the house is not. I mean, is that what you're trying to say to avoid no, to avoid no, that? The whole thing, the the, the house. Facing the street to me does not mean that it's parallel. Parallel, right? That, that's all. I just well, I, it doesn't say saying. parallel. I think the idea was that you're not facing the back end of a house or the side right. end. That it it really has the front uh, presence that it, you find typically in all the neighborhoods. And that's what the in the the middle wording under design standards. Planning board may waive. Right. That's what that's in reference to. Right. My other part of the question was also was apparently you've eased up a lot on the covered entry requirement. Yeah. From six, six or eight. Well, that was based on your mm -hmm. right. um, discussion. No, okay. You I didn't want that. I appreciate that. Well, it wasn't just you, actually. It was a board vote. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no way. <laughs> so any other questions on, on Zone A? Uh, just, uh, just the wording of the, in the last box for parking. Yep. One space per 1,000 square feet oh. per living area, up yeah. to two required per unit. Right. It doesn't read right. Okay, so actually, I'm glad you brought that up because up to this point, it was one space per 900 square feet. Mm -hmm. And so um, we use 900 as sort of the benchmark originally because accessory apartments are 900 square feet maximum and we always require at least one parking or one parking space for an accessory unit. We, mo we bumped it up to 1,000, just sort of thinking about all the iterations of we you know, you're making, you're doing gross square footage. So if you're doing a 10-year apartment building, you're adding up the square footage first. So it, a thousand seemed to be easier to round and and gives a little bit more flexibility. But, but the the old language, even in the current zoning, says up to two maximum. That's what. So where it says two required per unit, shouldn't that be two maximum per unit? Well, no, because then people got confused. The reason why we changed it is people were saying we can only put two per unit, where some people might want to add a third if they have multiple cars. So we haven't had the conversation of cat, you know, forcing people to have no more than two. At Plan Village, we do have that maximum. You can't have more than two car parking per unit. But I think in the rest of the zoning, we haven't had that conversation. So it, the intention stays the same. I think we were changing the wording to make it clear that we're not saying you can't put more than two spaces per unit. 
Well, I think that the idea is the open space requirement. I mean, because the worry is, I think in the URA, it's what, 40% or 50% open space? 40%. Yeah. On a small lot, 40% open space plus the dwelling, it's going to be hard to put in three spaces because it's going to be hard to hit that 40%. So That's as it should be. That's what I'm saying. So I think what it used to be is two maximum per unit, and you're saying, let's not put a max on it. Let's let people figure out what they could do on the site and still hit the requirements. So could I put for a single family house 10 spot, spots if I had a- If you met the open space. But that's why I want to clarify. There was never a cat, there was never a maximum on the number of parking spaces that you provide on your lot. There was a minimum. Right. There's always a minimum parking requirement. But that word maximum is what confused people. So we were trying to get away from well, that I guess confusion. the way it's worded now, I don't understand what it's saying. Okay. It's so still then, confusing in other words. Okay, so that's, saying, it just that's fine. Well. Yeah, um, so let's figure that out because I, I want to make sure that it's clear. So the idea is that you need to provide one space per thousand square feet of gross living area, but we're not going to, your requirement isn't going to be more than two parking spaces per residential unit. So we don't want to tell you that you have to have, you know, if you have a 4,000 square foot house, we don't want to say that you have to have four parking spaces. Right. Mm -hmm. we, we want to make sure you have two because that's the standard, um, two per unit. So then it would be one saying? space per 1,000 square feet with a minimum of two required per unit. Isn't that what you're saying? No, because no. you built something 1,200 square feet, then you don't only require one. Yeah, can I, can I, is there a way to build it so I only get one, I only need one spot? If you're a 1,000 square foot house, then you only need one. If you're an 1,100 square foot house, you need two. If you're a 5,000 square foot house, you need two. But you could have more if you had the right space. Right. right. Could you just Not put in front of space. no path? Well, for my 5,000 square foot house, I'm going to put in a four car garage. So it's, like a, it's a weird cap. It's like, it's, 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 you need one per thousand feet till you hit two. Right. And then after that, it's optional. Right. right. So that's what it, that's right. Gross right. living square foot, one space per 1,000 1, square feet gross living area up to 2,000. Maybe you should talk about the 2,000 square foot versus. Well, the problem is that we're going to be using this across the board. So if you have an apartment building and it's a 10,000 square foot apartment building, you calculate on 10,000 square feet. Mm. And there might be, you know, more than. Um, there Does might be. it have to be done the same way across the board? Well, we're just trying to make a simple standard that we use. But it, obviously it isn't simple at this point. Well, so if it's a 10,000 <laughs> square foot apartment building and say it's 2,500 square foot units, you need 20 spots. If it's a 10,000 square foot apartment building, you actually need 10. Because it's not by the number of units. Right. It's but only it's by the number of square right. feet. I thought it was by the unit, though. I thought. No, but that. So what we're trying to say? No, it's always been, it's always been square, square footage, feet. and then a maximum required two. But it's always said up to a maximum of two. So the idea was to say, <laughs> we're not you, you. You, if you want to put more than two per unit, you can. But we're the zoning's not going to tell you to put more than. But a unit to you is a building, not a livable. No, it's a living. A, so gross living area. Right. So again, it goes back to that. If you have a five thousand square foot unit and then you have a one thousand square foot unit, it's total six thousand square feet. So you might need to provide two. Uh, um, I'm sorry, <laughs> I lost my numbers now. Um, um, three spaces. One for the one thousand and right. two for the other one. Right. right. But you said it was, isn't that considered a 6,000 square foot building? You said it doesn't matter the number of units in a multifamily. It's a 6,000. Well, it's a two part building. calculation. Because it's separate, and you, it's separate structures. Because it's so uh, Carolyn, I'm trying to figure out someone who doesn't want to provide the parking that they would need for the livable space to build. Yeah. And then they're saying, oh, well, you can park on the street. And that's the, I, I'm, that's what I'm trying to think through. Our, yeah. Does it, does it respond to that? So the, the, basic, the, basic, the, the basic thing I want to get across is 
the pro it's not a proposal to change the way we've always been calculating parking. Um, but if it's but clearly the language isn't um, good enough for people to understand that the I, the idea. So we um, you know I can go back and wordsmith and see um, make sure it, it does work. The idea has always been, and it, and we would propose that it continue that way that you need to provide the number of parking spaces. And it really comes down to if you're building a multi-unit structure. Um, what if it said one space per thousand square feet of living area and just said no more than two per unit? It's, requir required. it's required. required. OK. So that Something like that. Just flip okay. right. OK, Does yeah. Make it yeah, because I was, I was <clears throat> Okay, no more than two, two required per unit. Okay. Two spaces. Okay. I think that people parking cars all over their lot is a problem. Mm -hmm. Certainly up on Columbus Avenue or any lot up in, off of South Street, there's a lot of houses that have sort of have cars parked all over their front yard. Okay, so one space per 1,000 square feet of gross living area. It's only during Derby. No more than two spaces. I just have a second sentence. Those are horses. Yeah. No more than two spaces required per unit. Round up. Cool. Round up. <laughs> yeah, that's better, okay. though, right? Awesome. Thank Good you. Good with that one? Well, I think it's, uh, sorry, one, one space per 1,000 square foot gross living area round up. That the round up would go on the first sentence. Yeah. Okay. But that's all. No yeah, so can you just read the right. final part? I was going to say that. Yep. Um, one space per 1,000 square feet of gross living area. Behind your head. Round up. No more than two spaces required per unit. Yeah. Okay. We good? Yeah. Okay. And then, um, so that, that's the other, those are the two big changes, the lot size and the parking. And then um, the uses are really just the same as they were, as you guys have discussed over the last year and a half. But we just pulled them out of the table and put them in a list for them. So um, nothing's changed. So they'll be in the chart and in list form? No, no, no. This is, this is, in this is, this is the new. Okay, okay. I think the list form is much better. Than yes, the chart is. You have to almost take a deep breath and say, okay, I'm going in. Okay, <laughs> 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 chart Except, yeah. 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 No, I think you've done a lot of good work. Yeah. Yeah. It's a really well, we nice. had help from interns. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, from the back to the interns. Okay. So, do you need a recommendation to move forward with this or, or oh, well, yeah I mean so basically the next step would be if you're good with this then I'm going to start putting in an ordinance form and send it to City Council is that okay sure yeah. make it so and can you tell me what PL means on the upper right hand corner of all the property line probably you need to put that out just because I think people aren't going to know that and uh, I would suggest that um, that we use the term accessory structure in all the diagrams, but then you get to garage slash structure, and then in some places it says garage. Go back and see if you can't make whatever you're calling that outbuilding. Use the same words both in the on the pictures and on the other. Okay, I might be able to, but there are really there if are there various. There really are differences. Yeah. Then that's something else again. But I wasn't sure that okay. for all of them. So just okay. check on it. Sure. Um, and I guess the one other thing I would mm -hmm. say, just hoping to make it clearer, is where you say zero okay. setback allowed, mm -hmm. and you're pointing at the edge of the property line, and you really should be pointing at the line that runs through the two buildings. And I um, yeah, let me go. I'm back trying to that. make it clear for somebody who looks at it. Okay, yeah, so let me just go to B. Here. Where are you? Looking? Yeah, where are you looking? Yeah. I'm looking. It's not on B and C. URC, oh, okay. maybe where there's. Oh. oh. We're doing just A. Just doing A. Right. Well, now. it's on B as well. Right. B and C have um, zero lot lines. Yeah. Sorry. I, I never get it. Um, the arrow just goes. The arrow goes to the edge of the property line, and it's just to help people understand that this is where the. <coughs> right. 
Okay. You notice they changed changed the principal to primary so they wouldn't get it mixed up. Oh, because he has no patience. Oh. Do you want to move into B? Yep. <coughs> Sorry, I've got it. So do, do you need a recommendation and vote on A, B, and C, or just at the end? Uh, we'll do it forward? at the end. <coughs> but, so let's jump into B. Okay. So um, B, um, again, sort of the description, single, two, three, two and three family units primarily allowed in various development patterns. Um, um, and then the lot dimensions. I don't know what if this got zoomed in. Sorry. It is weird though. When you do the lot dimensions, the frontage is 50 feet minimum, and the depth is 75. But the minimum lot size is 2,500. But there's right. No, so that's what I want. No to way talk. to actually do that. No. That, that's what I want to talk about. So originally in URB, up until this point, we had talked about a um, um, 5,000 square foot, no matter what, single, two, three, or town, any kind of townhouse configuration. So. Um, in sort of thinking about um, keeping some level of uh, or addressing the concerns that have been raised, um, going to the per unit, we were trying to figure out the number, um, you know, how you would get there. So if we did a 2,500 square foot per unit, that's true. That's really, for a single family house, you're really meaning 3,750 square feet of lot area as a minimum for a single family home. Um, but when you go to 20, if you have a two family, that bumps you back up to the 5,000, which is where you were before. And if you look at this table here, which is originally there was a lot of data driven by the Zoning Divisions Committee about analyzing all the nonconformities yep. in the district. So the um, two families are certainly less than 12,000 square feet. If you bring it down to 5,000 square feet, then 92% of the two existing two families would conform. So it doesn't address all of them, but it, it, it really um, reflects what the two-family lot size is. So really we use, we sort of were thinking about those numbers, and then for a three-family, it would obviously bump you up again to 7,500 square feet, which is more than the 5,000 that we had been looking at before, so it maybe gives a little bit more comfort level that you do have to get a little bit bigger size lot um, to do three-family. Um, but then it would still allow, it would bring a lot of those three families that are in existence into, conform into conformity with, um, as opposed to the 1,800 or <coughs> thousand square feet that's required now. Um, so that's the, the change in this um, iteration. Questions on this one? This is, are we on B now? Mm -hmm. Just checking. <laughs> so the graphics and everything, nothing's changed. Right. And then I just want to go back. And then the parking, I need to make the same change to the parking. Right. right. Yeah. Carolyn Frandy's shy about speaking up, but you <laughs> noted that the um, principal structure on the diagrams. Mm -hmm is actually referred to as primary structure sometimes and primary in the writing. Yep. If, unless there's some legal reason you want to do that. Primary would be wrong. Okay. I think primary is more meaningful. Okay. You don't have that spelling problem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got to go and change my text box. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Is it, yeah. Steve? Oh, is that hard to yeah. 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 Let's just go to primary. You can't vote then. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, it's not. There's no chimney, no chimney over there. Unless it's an old picture. And then there's a hemlock there. So we're good with B, everybody? With the same changes to the wording as in A? And then, um, you, you have any questions on any of these, you can jump in. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, because I know you just discussed this, and I won't hold this up long, but the. B says lot size 2,500 square feet. Per unit. Per unit. Thank you. Yeah, that gets it. Okay. So we should call it. <laughs> City Council changed our rules. Yeah. Uh, now I see why it maps out that way. Thanks. It's like well, sponsored by. <laughs> 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 she told a little picture brought to you by. <laughs> 
<laughs> we are. I hope he uses it. You don't care. Okay, okay. URC. Same comment. Yeah, I mean, again, the same thing. We used twenty again. We used twenty five hundred square feet per unit. Going back to sort of the data that was pulled a long time ago about the existing conditions on the ground. Um, this actually brings um, again sort of up to about ninety percent ninety. Um, I guess nine a little less than ninety percent of the single families, and then um, um, it sort of ratchets down, um, but it brings significantly more of the units into compliance. Um, but again, the 3750 for the single family home, just based on the depth and the frontage, and then a per unit count. So, um, you know, the concern about all of a sudden getting 10 units on a 3,000 square foot lot come to fruition um, in the URC. It might be also good when this goes to City Council. I'm not sure who's the, who you or Wayne do the presentation, but I don't think a lot of people understand what it means to be conforming versus non-conforming. What that, right. why, why that benefits a lot of people who are yeah. non-conforming right. now right. to all of a sudden be conforming because right. it, it frees them up to do a lot of things that they can't do right now. Right, by right. And then, and you know, the other interesting thing that's happened in the meantime is there's this ca court case, and we just went through the zoning, a zoning change um, to make the zoning consistent with this latest court ruling that says that if you're non-conforming by just an inch, then you can take your whole lot and push into it any way you want as long as you get a permit from the zoning board, which is not ever how anybody in the state has ever interpreted the code. Um, and so to the extent that we can bring more lots into compliance, then you might have less change in the neighborhood from properties that are now conforming that were once not conforming. Right. <laughs> um, and it's a sort of, a, it's a really sort of a, something that's turned everything on its head, I think. Um, so what was once a variance, now you can just go to the zoning board for a much lower threshold if you're not conforming. But if you comply, then you'll have to comply forever and ever. Right. Mm -hmm. So. So it's somewhat, it's in some ways, it's somewhat more constricting to make you conform right, make than it change. is otherwise. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. In right. other ways, not. Right. So not entirely. <laughs> so You're just going to sit there all night, Jen. Carolyn, would you benefit? I mean, do we need to go back to the tables, or are you comfortable with the six match where we've been? Point taken. Um, I double checked them. <laughs> no, that's, um, that's the answer. Because I was worried that, you know, I might leave something out or whatever. But I, you know, it can't hurt to have an, another. Okay. And maybe I'll make Wayne do that set since I've looked at it so much. Right. So well, too close. I think the analysis will be useful for you. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I feel like we've done this for so long. I feel just confident that we know that, you know, this is, this is an improvement to what we were dealing with. Right. But that won't be the first blush on it. And so I, I think that ex explaining about conformity, explaining about the, the effect in the neighborhoods, all those things will be helpful. Well, the, and how it came up to pass that we were discussing this in the first place, that ZRC really focused all their energy on this, I think the history is important here. Right. And I think a lot of it, I think this ultimately is so much more user friendly. But this, when you, the presentation is made for the, for the public's interest, I think is is important because what came out of it seemed like 90 percent of the questions were was just an unknown they saw these big reductions in numbers and they thought all these changes are being forced down our throat when really we're trying to say no 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 your house which didn't used to conform now will conform and and, and why is that good for you right right and so i think the presentation needs to hammer that home so people understand what this was born out of the zrc and all the work that went behind it and what why, why we think this is a good thing. Okay. Any questions on C? Well done. This is two years in the making, but. Or a plus, plus. So you guys yeah. are fine with the layout and the. I mean, I heard you say it. Yep. Jim? Oh, the pictures are real pretty. Can I make a comment? Absolutely. Sure. So, um, 
I like that it looks like a Porsche in URC. Yeah. <laughs> that was that, very nice. It wasn't um, a pickup truck, but there you go. <laughs> um, I, I think that people are going to remain concerned about the upper end of, of uh, the larger developments that, uh, that can occur. I, you know, as I, I look at this, I, I see for most of, uh, and I'm speaking for Ward 3 in terms of where a lot of the URC actually is, that, um, that for the majority of URC, this kind of zoning makes sense because the lots are actually there's, there's been a lot of de development, the lots are small, but there's a number of properties that run along like the dike area and, and along Pomeroy Terrace and that they have these long backyards with lots of open space opportunity and that, um, that there's a lot of worry that rather than having this sense of like you're moving from the meadows into the city, that you're going to have like this uh, dense barricade that could go potentially go up like like along Henry Street, Pomeroy, uh, William Street, um, and and that this formula you know works fine for closer to the city, but out on the outer edges we might end up with something that we don't want, and so that's that's my one concern. Well, that, okay. May I ask a question? Yes. I mean, that suggests a different zoning. I mean, a it could mean a zone. different zone, and so it. Um, and I don't know if that means if, you know, so if, are you guys just voting on the tables and then you'll look at zones or does the zone changes and map changes get addressed at city council? No, no. I mean, at this point there are no map changes proposed. Right. So I, can I just ask for clarification? You're, are you saying that Henry Street is not like Pomeroy and William Street or, and that People on There's Henry a Street number don't of want to be built like Hen uh, Williams and Pomeroy. Or are you saying Williams and Pomeroy have deep lots too, so there right. might be great because William Street, the back end, goes into the meadow, into the floodplain, so you can't build up on the back end. Right, but you could count what's in the floodplain as part of your open space, along with any wetlands. I would imagine uh, that um, that. I mean, there was one of those things I, it came up with zoning revisions. You know, do we consider what's not accessible space open space? Because part of, you know, the idea was to promote yards. And um, so there's, there's that little piece. But there's a number of properties. Some properties on William Street have no backyard. And then there's a few that have these broad, lots of area in back. And uh, that, so there could become an opportunity for putting in something substantial there. And I think that people in general aren't, you know, that, you know, I've, we've seen a lot of development while all of this discussion's going on. And when, when the, the properties are, when the buildings are up to the street and they seem to fit in and it's one or two families, nobody complains. But I, I you know, I look at um, the diagram um, for clusters, you know, and, you can see how you know it could go on and on and on, and that should stuff like that happen, people aren't going to be a real happy, um, and that um, and that's not up to the street. That's not that's not that um, urban design that people are okay with. So that's my one concern, and you know it. I wonder if there's a way to come up with a mechanism so that that can be addressed here. I mean. Once you guys send it off, it goes off into the, to the political process, and then it, it becomes, you know, a political, f it, it, that it's no longer a technical discussion, that things, you know, it's good, it's bad, you know, and I, I so, th but, so th that's one thing I would suggest is maybe visiting that a little. Well, one of the things about this, it doesn't change that scenario you're talking about that much. Those big properties on Pomeroy Terrace, or a couple of big ones in Williams, those are big enough now to put multifamilies on. I mean, I, I could take. But some no, you can't put them because they don't have the frontage right now. For but, example, but for like a cluster, or you right. don't need the frontage. You could, you know, uh, there's 10 acres behind Maria Tomasco's house that she owns that that it goes down onto the floodplain. I mean, so you could. I think there's build a up, CR on that. <laughs> yeah, you couldn't build much on that, but but and some of the houses on Parma, there's nothing to stop them from doing that today. So. 
along, I mean, so uh, this along is along Henry Street, the the frontage requirement stops most of those properties for, or, from being developed. No, you could do a cluster on one of those because so there's nothing to stop you from putting a cluster. So what's there. the what's well, the cluster do, frontage? You could do a townhouse, I think. Townhouse so, um, yeah, I mean, I on, clearly you. Clearly, you heard that from one of the residents on Henry Street that th there was a deep lot there that, you know, and in fact, there are wetlands at the back of the lot, um, but uh, that it was going to be obliterated and, you know, go with. Right. But, but so the idea was to address some of that issue was to put a per unit cap on it as opposed to allowing sort of open space be the determinate, determinating uh, factor. I think the other thing that just to address that issue, it is a policy issue and it is a, and I'm sure it will come up in the discussion and maybe the zoning will go down in flames because of it. But sort of any way you slice and dice it, if you talk about what's, what's a, what's a urban core and where do you want to encourage development? You know, we drew, drew rings around downtown in the Central Business District. And any way you go, a quarter of a mile, which is the walking distance along streets, you hit these neighborhoods. So from a sustainability perspective, you want to be a quarter of a mile. You could even be a half a mile. But a quarter of a mile is gr a great place to have residential use because you have easy access. I mean, that's a very short distance. So that's the other issue. The policy issue is if you look at a, a diagram of what's walkable, you easily get out Bridge Street to the end of the URC district. And so you then it's sort of, it's interesting because if you look at it and pretend that you didn't have a URC map, it really does go. <laughs> the quarter of a mile actually extends beyond some of the URC boundary. So from that perspective, a lot of the URC does make sense. Um, but again, it certainly raises concerns for people about change in the neighborhood, that's for sure. Yeah, but, but but I guess my point is the change that this is going to allow isn't much different than what could be built today. So a, a clustered townhouse on one of those long lots on uh, Henry Street could do today. Somebody could come in and put in just like they did want to do on North Street. But So to do that, what's the frontage requirement? 75 feet? Um, I think it's actually 100 feet for more than one unit. So, a so number you, of you those... could assemble a couple of the lots and do it. Yeah. So, yeah. so I mean... And the ones on Pomeroy Terrace certainly have a 100 foot front. Most of those houses all, with the exception of a few, most of those, if not all of them, have 100 feet. Ben and Una's place, you know, that goes way down. You could, so. But the, the change in frontage for along Henry Street opens them all up to that type of development. That's only if you tore down a building to redo it. Or, or yeah, or add on to it or. But bear in mind that the sustainability plan favors this kind of Right. And again, I'm, I was part of the Zoning Revisions Committee, and I'm not arguing against this for, you know, 95% of, of the ward. I'm not even arguing against it for my property or the street directly across from mine, Valley Street, uh, which is actually one of the, it's a very dense street in terms of, you know, the tightly um, fitting houses, uh, as is William Street. I mean, it, I, it's just that on the outer edges, there are these properties with these big, long, you know, they, they can go back many hundreds of feet and that, um, and that you won't have building that's up to the street if, if somebody really densely develops it. Well, but I'm not sure. I mean, that's why the design standards are there and that's why the parking standards were put in place to say, because anything over 2,000 square feet of construction requires site plan approval as today it does and and carrying forward it would so the, the there would be a lot of uh, and that the, now with the new design standards it would essentially dictate that that would be the case and that was the whole point of incorporating design because you know that was heard pretty loudly and clearly right. Jim is there any realization that this fear of change wouldn't happen like I mean it you know the fact that you would have to take down a, a structure in order to redo the well lot. there's a structure on Henry Street where the owner is basically waiting for the structure to fall down uh, I'm speaking of the the watchers property and he's been really vocal that his plans are to develop it in some way um, his he's his asking price has been rumored that you know somewhere between 250, 250 to 350 
for just the land, you know, with the idea that he's going to sell it to somebody who's going to develop it rather intensely. Um, I mean, drive by there, you can see it, it, everything's abandoned. All the, the buildings are, you know, we're, you know, we, our neighborhood is fairly well taken care of except for that one property. And it, it, that's his sole intent is to put in something, you know, like this. So, um, you know, um, so we think it's kind of likely. So. But um, if that were the case, if it's over 2,000 square feet, it would come for site plan approval just like it would now anyway. Yeah. So nothing's going to change. So we'd still have that opportunity for a technical review. Except the, the difference that would change is that you don't really have any design standards to fall back on to now. Right, right. Right, and, and it would, you know, if one lot changes in a neighborhood, I think we talked about this before, for those immediate neighbors, that's absolutely a change. Um, but overall, I mean, we looked at the numbers. Overall, the number, you know, if you take a more broader perspective in terms of the whole neighborhood or that part of the city or even the entire city, it's a very small percentage. So, I mean, again, it does affect the people who live there immediately as any, as any new house would. So my question is, so if you guys vote on this tonight to send it off, it goes off to city council or? Right. Mm -hmm. It will be officially submitted as an ordinance. So I have a suggestion that maybe you, you post this and then um, with the idea that, you know, maybe people have a chance because this draft, you know, as it came, you know, this is the first time I've seen it tonight and have let the public kind of know there's a draft out there that we're going to, uh, vote yay or nay on we're, we're considering sending off to city council the thing is once it leaves you guys it's no longer a, a technical discussion it becomes a political discussion so my suggestion would be is post it and uh wait till you next meet to um like almost take like a second motion I'm not, how long? I was going to say this is a two to four year technical discussion that yeah, we've been that, involved in, right? That you went to the zero say sunset? Three years ago. Well, but in fact, it will take Carolyn that long to put it in statutory language, won't it? Not really. Okay. <laughs> I, feel I mean, it's going to be an attachment to the actual language that would go to the order. The things that, you know, the, the, nothing's really changed since September when you had the public forums except that the per unit, except for the, some of the design standards, the per unit counts versus just a flat lot size. And so, and, and so going forward, and what, the is, reformatting. what is the public process? Um, public hearings. That would be done after it's presented to the council. Well, the first thing, it does, the, there's not even a presentation to city council. City council receives it and then refers it out immediately for public hearing. So, my guess is it would go to um, at least three sub, well, planning board ordinance and Ed Lou and council has sent things to many more committees previously. So it wouldn't surprise me if they decide to send it elsewhere as well. Well, certainly you'll post it for that. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. If it's in its final form now, wouldn't it be a stronger position to say it has been posted for the last six weeks or? Um, I'm not, I, don't, I, I guess I see no downside to posting it. But that's not what the, the proposal is to post it and then have another right. have another meeting about this, have another hearing and invite the public again. And I, right. I think to continue. I, I'm not at all opposed to public comment, but I, I feel like we have really had it. Had I the also public think comment. from a technical standpoint, it's sound and that we can recommend this. As is. And then the political process starts, and essentially Jim's objections to it are political, not technical. So the political arena is maybe as well. I, I prefer the technical. Pardon? <laughs> <laughs> so do we. So you can characterize it. Um, I mean, you know, you have had public comment, and, and it's not the beginning of the, I mean, it's a continuation of the public um, so even, and I guess the only, I mean, that's fine if you guys want to take, you know, some, just post it and, and 
we certainly wouldn't do anything to notice people and say come to the next meeting to give your comment um, per se the only thing that I you know it's April now and so if we do want to have any public hearings on it it's got to be before the end of June um, because it doesn't really make sense to have official public hearings in the summertime right. so you know I I'm thinking from that perspective, just an administrative perspective, do we want to start it before the summer or just have it out there floating around and then pick it up again in September, that kind of thing. It could always go to City Council in the interim, but certainly there wouldn't be any public discussion about it until September. Well, you're also butting up against an election is the reality. Well, that's there. true. Right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm, I, and I, as somebody who's been talking about this for probably five years, I'm, and, I mean, I, I understand Jim's concern. But for uh, a handful of properties on one end, I, I mean, I just, I'd rather start this. I mean, we're, we've known it's going to go to the city council sooner right. or later. I think it's as good as it's going to be before we get to city council. So I'm completely in favor of recommending it tonight. When it comes right down to it, people that live next to a lake of water don't have a right. I mean, it's just in general, don't necessarily have a right to keep somebody from building a house on it if they don't own it. Uh, and I think everybody wants to live at the end of a cul-de-sac and everybody wants to be miles from their neighbor, but uh, it's not the, and it's not the end of the world to have 20 foot to the next house. I'm only about in the boonies and I have really house, houses really close on each side. I, th I think we've been talking about this for so long and we've reached the point where we're just making very minor, minor yeah. changes and I think it, as Franny said, this is sound. Everything makes sense. It's the, it's the last step of a long series of steps, and I'm comfortable with recommending this to move forward. I, I want to say, I mean, I think that we've been extraordinarily responsive to the Ward 3 concerns. I mean, a lot of the changes we've made recently have been in response to Ward, right. Ward 3 concerns. And Carolyn, you met with them. You met with the Ward 3 Association, right, some time ago, and right. changes were made after mm -hmm. that. Any more discussion? Motion? We don't, we don't need to close the public hearing, right? No, There's it's no just a discussion. Okay. Um, so this is for not just C, but A, B, and C. I move that we recommend A, B, and C with whatever changes we discussed to the city council. Second. Second, Stephen. All in favor? That's it. That's not, I mean, I would absolutely post it as soon as I make these tweaks and everything so it doesn't have to wait till it goes for public hearing. You know, it's been up there already all along, so this is just, I didn't want to put anything else up until, you know, we got the principles changed to the primaries and all of that. <laughs> I'm just, I'm so happy with it. I hope it survives the process. That's what I'm really wanting. Okay, last order of business. We have minutes of March 14th. I'll move we approve the minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Second. Second. Discussion. Yes. I suggested some changes to Carol, and one of them was the spelling of citing on page two. Um, that change was made. That change was made, and I didn't know whether. There were two things that I opposed, and it doesn't appear in the minutes, and I'm not ashamed of that fact when they could appear in the minutes. <laughs> what were those? One was public comment period, and the so other was center court. You were opposed to having a public comment period? Yeah. Okay, so you want me to add that to the minutes? I wasn't you quite under I didn't quite understand that. <laughs> we also. Okay. You were here. Oh, oh, you didn't understand my comment. Oh, right. When you emailed it to me. Okay. And then I was also in favor of center court being a public way. But. Okay. I didn't take individual. I mean, I just took the <laughs> votes right. um, and recorded those. That doesn't matter in that case. Okay. I guess we're not treating. All in favor of the minutes? They yeah. vote yes. Side of the angels as far as the public hearing goes. Motion to adjourn. So made. Second. So moved. Second. All in favor? We're done. <laughs>